There was this famous American baseball player. His name was Yogi Berra. He used to have these sayings. Sayings like, 90% of baseball is half mental. You could observe a lot just by watching. <laughs> what else did he say? Um, it ain't over till it's over. Another one he would say is, um, when you get to a fork in the road, take it. Now, American style reed making has a fork in the road. And I think it's one of the things that throws people off, particularly young players, college players, who have not yet found their own way in reed making. I think there are two schools of uh, American reed making. Actually, there's more than that, but I'll, I'm going to boil it down to two. One is old school players from New England like the Boston Symphony, like uh, Gillet and their students, Gomberg and their students. And it has to do with the way they make their reeds. And I'm from New England, so I tended to make my reeds this way also. And that is when you're dealing with a, a single radius gouge or a weaker cane or a weaker setup, you cannot make a classic style um, Philadelphia, Cleveland, Old Atlanta style read. And that's the other school. For me, for me, this is, of course, this is all in my head and I'm just, you know, letting you in on it. But f for me, the Cleveland, let's see, the Old Atlanta, like Barr Robinson, uh, David Weber's reads, John Mack, and um, probably the more modern Philadelphia players have a certain way of making the reed, and that is there's quite a bit taken out of the back. The back is a function of the reed, and the V has a, a very pronounced V in the tip. And the reason why they can make reeds like that is because the gouge or the cane, the cane is hard, let's say, or the gouge is uh, pretty strong, so they're able to take a lot out of the back. However, the old New England style, which is what I grew up with, where you deal mostly with the tip and not so much the back. The back you kind of take out for tone, for the sound of the reed. Whereas in the classic American style you see in pictures, they take out of the back as a means of the function of the reed. Mixing them creates a lot of confusion. So here I have these two reeds, and I'm going to scrape both of them till I get to that fork in the road and try to show you what's going on. Let's start with this one to show you these things. Um, so I'll just kind of quickly scrape through the tip on both. And hopefully won't ruin them. I usually start the reeds like this, like um, I'll just take some of the tip out. If you could see that very well or not. Move this light. Let's see. And then I'll scrape um, some of the. And then I'll scrape some of the channels where the heart would be. All right. So do that. These have been well soaked. Already I'm feeling the difference as I'm scraping these. One is a little um, stronger in that it doesn't, it's not collapsing under the weight of the scrape. It doesn't collapse as much. The cane is, I believe it's Marion cane. It's kind of a medium, medium hard cane, I would say. Whereas a lot of the Alio is medium soft. Let's do this one now. And we're going to get to this point real quick, I think. Now, I'll see if I can get them to... Um, I 
That's got a lot of rattle. That's nice. Let's see if we can get this one like that. Now this. So they're both similar in that I've started the scrapes with both of them. You can see they're very similar. Um, so now this is where we're going to veer off a little bit. For this one, I'm hoping it's stronger. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a lot out of the back, as that you would see mostly with um, this like Cleveland style, and then put the V in the tip. It really has to do with the function of the reed and it gets the reed to kind of collapse it's almost as if it's a there's a fulcrum effect where you have this the the heart is like the fulcrum of this teeter-totter between the front and the back I didn't learn about this really until I took a lesson in grad school with a player that was playing in Boston Symphony and my teacher said you know you ought to Genevieve said to me you ought to have a lesson with him he's really good at reeds Genevieve didn't teach me much about reeds <laughs> no, no, really none of my teachers did it would be best if I could start from the back here and scrape to the front. I'm a little hurried with this and you want it to be kind of even. Yeah, it's definitely taken out of the back and it will affect the crow by making it a drop in pitch. I'm not saying specifically that this is how it's done. I'm just saying this is how I interpret the fork in the road, so to speak. And what it does when you take a lot out of the back like that is it kind of collapses the reed and puts a lot of lows in it, and then you can finish the tip accordingly, right? Because the tip is still fairly heavy. I mean, there's still material there that needs to come out. And this is where you put that really definitive V in the tip. And, you know, as I've seen players do that from these places, that's kind of like your classic American scrape. And I say classic, I say, you know, there's a lot removed out of the back and there's a V in the tip that's one way you make a reed but you really can't make a reed like this if the cane is very soft now there are schools that don't make reeds like this of course boston has changed quite a bit since when i was there and the players are influenced by um, younger generations of players and so they use a they tend to use a double radius machine which has a very strong or heavy gouge and they're able to make reeds like like similar to this but there are other places in the country who don't use those machines and they can't make reeds like this because those reeds will collapse big time and notice I'm not doing a lot with the tip except making that V, trying to put in that definition, right? I'm not scraping the tip very thin, I'm just scraping the definition and kind of flatly scraping the tip off to the sides. I don't know if you can see that or not, but... And so you can start to see the V in the tip and so on, and then I'll clip it till it crows a C, and it'll be pretty close to a finished reed. Maybe a little more. Still a little flat. Yeah, I could clip. 
with it again. Let me just play it. So it's close. And to me, this is like, you know, that very old school Atlanta style. Kind of like a David Weber read. And perhaps the Philadelphia style of today may lend itself to this. At least that's my interpretation, right? But I want to show you how you cannot combine the two if you're making a read this way. And this really tripped me up for many years trying to understand why I was trying to make this kind of read with the wrong gouge. Can't be done. At least it can't be done well. Because what you're going to end up doing is clipping, scraping, clipping, scraping, clipping, scraping. Right? And it'll get, you'll never get it to pitch. Whereas this one, it'll eventually settle in. Yeah, that's pretty close. And I'll just clip it one more time. It's a little light for me, but... So there you have it. It's just basically, you scrape the the um, back of the reed and it settles the reed down and then you finish the tip and it's a very pronounced V and it plays well, it's stable, has a nice tone, whatnot, it plays, right? You cannot do that with a gouge that is weak or a cane that is soft. You're not able to make a reed that way. But what happens is the strength in the reed is from the tube that runs through the center of the gouge. And this is how I feel about the reed, at least. The strength is from the center to the sides, not the sides to the center. The sides' main purpose is closing and staying closed. But the strength of the reed is in the keystone, which is in the center of the gouge. The problem with single radius gouges is that it's not that the, key, the center of the gouge is strong enough, it's that there's too much material in the sides. So if you were to take out in the back and you would relieve a lot of the strength, strength here in the back, oh, the reed's going to collapse. And you can't make this kind of reed. So let me show you what you can do. And this was brings me back to, um, harkens me to my old days, my Boston days, where I used to make reeds. And I'd gotten to a point where I was doing fairly well and then I, like I said, I had a lesson with someone and it got my wheels spinning in the wrong direction <laughs> because their setup was very different than what I was using. And it was a struggle for many years trying to understand why I couldn't make a read a certain way with a certain gouge. Uh, if you look at, let's say, a book like um, Obo Read Styles, this book, right? Obo Reed Styles. You'll see lots of pictures of reeds. And uh, that's great, but it's not going to sink in as to the reason why the reeds look the way they do. And of course, if you read some of the things that are written, you know, many of the reed makers say, look, you can't judge a reed, you can't judge a book by its cover, essentially. You can't tell. Uh, how the reed's going to be or how it's going to play just by looking at it. And this is very true. And why is that? Because the underlying materials, the cane itself, the gouge, are what determine the reed, not how you scrape it. You know, John Mack used to say, he used to say, if to scrape the reed, for the gouge, not how you want it to be. It has to be 
the gouge, All right? I'm just gonna lengthen this just to make it long because it is a long scrape reed, and yeah, it's an American reed. I'll put some American in it. Lots of rattle. I like lots of rattle. That's lots of rattle is good. So the cane is much softer. It's a Alio cane, medium soft cane. And I did gouge it on this machine, so it does have some strength to it. There we have the beginnings. Now there's no depth taken out of here. I just scraped the back, but there's really not much taken out. Where he should be. Now I'm going to scrape the tip from the, the front toward the back. If you look at some of these uh, pictures of reeds, you look at the Gomberg reeds, you look at Lifshe's reeds, look at um, Sprinkle, Ray Still. And uh, even Tabato's reads pictures of them. You will notice that they're long scrape reads essentially, but there's not a there's not deep windows in the back. And I suspect suspect that if they were to make reads like that, it would be dangerous. They wouldn't uh, they wouldn't survive. We essentially made a reed for the tip, and many of those tips are very short, actually. And those tips are blended into the rest of the reed. And there's many schools that teach that type of reed making even today. So not everyone has adopted that classic, that look, that reed that has a definitive V and the um, a lot taken out of the back. Not not all schools have adopted that technique, but what they, needs to be explained to you is that you can't combine the two techniques. It's either one or the other. Because you will get yourself in a lot of trouble. In one of them, you won't remove enough from the heart, and the other, if you remove from the back, the, the thing will just turn into mush. I think there are reed makers out there that are confused by this because they do remove some from the heart and then they take out of the back and the reed only lasts a day. Right? If you want your reed to last, it has to have something on it. Oh yeah, it's coming along nice. So I'll just show you what that looks like. Um, not a lot to take it out of the back. I will not be taking a lot out of the back. Instead, we're going to do this another way. Get the tip to, to vibrate nicely, and then blend it. And I start from the tip and go backwards with this type of reed, instead of starting from the back of the tip and going forward. Because really, you're trying to get it to work from the front to the back. We're trying to get the reed to work from the front to the back, yeah? So that it's more this direction and not not this direction, okay? Now if you look at the reeds of players in there, I think uh, they have a picture of Woodham's reed and uh, John Mack reed and uh, Joseph Robinson reed. Uh, you will notice that they take out of the back and it's very pronounced. There's a lot taken out of the back, but that's because of the gouge or the hardness of the cane. We're spending a lot more time in the channels here. ready to play. Let's play it. Yeah, it has a little meat on its bones. It has enough anyway. 
for many years this just really threw me off. And you know, there are oboe players out there, I'm not going to name any names, but who are adamant about the way the gouge has to be. You know, the amount of strength and, you know, people argue over this sort of thing. Well, that's because they make their reads differently. That's why. Uh, and you can't treat it all the same. You can see this read. Where I didn't take a lot out of the back, you know, there's, there's, it's a long scrape. Take a little bit more out of the back and then you can add to that malleability, which is kind of nice. A lot of oval players like that have the read have slightly different tone characteristics in different registers. But it's pretty much done. That's the difference. I really didn't take that much out of the back. Much smoother, as opposed to this reed, which has had quite a bit taken out of the back. You see that? And that's part of the function of the reed. That school. Yeah, that's really a school of reed making. And it confuses people because the early American style was more like this, where there wasn't as much taken out of the back, if any. It's just one smooth plane to the tip, you see? And I could spend more time on the tip, but the tip is essentially a little shorter, and there's more taken out of the channels. Because this is a medium soft cane, which still plays well, right? Plays real nice, it has a nice tone and everything, However, it would be impossible to make this kind of cane and this kind of reed like this it would not be able to be done because it's just too soft. And I think a lot of young players get uh, confused by this. You know, if you're a burgeoning reed maker, it's important you understand the difference. You may not see the difference. Yeah, you're looking at pictures, you may not see the difference. But there's a big difference between the two and how they're made and how they can work and function. I hope to clarify some of the confusion that a lot of the pictures give you.